Chuck E. Cheese's, known as the place where a kid can be a kid, has been a part of everyone's childhood, including me. This popular pizza chain with arcades and animatronics has spread all across the globe, from California to Texas to Florida to Illinois. But there's one location that I would like to talk about, and that place is Bowling Green, Kentucky. Because believe it or not, Bowling Green actually has some interesting Chuck E. Cheese history, that not many people know about. In this video, I'm going to go over the entire history of Bowling Green's Chuck E. Cheese, from a short-lived location to a small mall location, to maybe even a competitor. This is the history of Chuck E. Cheese's in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So before I talk about Chuck E. Cheese's and Bowling Green, I want to quickly go over the history of each. Chuck E. Cheese's was founded on May 17, 1977 and opened its first location in San Jose, California. It was created by Nolan Bushnell, who was also the co-founder of the video game company Atari. He wanted to make a place that families could hang out and play the latest arcade games, since before this, arcades were seen as dangerous places due to violence. As for Bowling Green, Kentucky's history, it's a little complex. Bowling Green, Kentucky was founded in 1798 and was reportedly named after Bowling Green Square in New York City and currently has a population of 184,000, making it the third largest city of Kentucky. Obviously a great place for that big fat pizza rat to expand to. However, while other cities in Kentucky got their restaurants in the early 80s, it wouldn't be till the mid-80s when the Bowling City got its own location. You can be young. You can be old. You can be me. You can be bold. Wow! Like Chuck E. Cheese, you can be real cheesy. A great Italian pizza recipe with tons of mozzarella. You can be real juicy. All kinds of topics for a hungry fella. You can be wiggly. You can be giggly. You can be a star. You can eat from the bar. You can be a man. You can be a mouse. You can be anything you want to be. At Chuck E. Cheese, it's the only one. Where you hungry for fun? The Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater of Bowling Green, Kentucky opened on April 17, 1984, to the joy of families everywhere. The restaurant was located in the Old Hickory Building, which is across from the Greenwood Shopping Mall. More on that later. The owners of the restaurant were Fred Barrett, Barrett, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and his wife Maria. Fun fact, anyone who worked at any of the other stores in the Old Hickory Building got exclusive discounts from the Chuck E. Cheese owners. That's nice. So like I said earlier, the restaurant opened in 1984, and any ordinary person wouldn't think too much of this. But if you're a Pizza Time Theater fan, then your spine probably shivered at the mentioning of that year. This is because in March of 1984, just a few weeks before the opening of Bowling Green's location, Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, due to the effects of the infamous video game crash the year before. When this news reached Kentucky, people began to fear that this would affect the Kentucky locations, including Bowling Green. However, 
Fred Barrett assured everybody that Bowling Green, as well as any of the other Chuck E. Cheese locations in Kentucky, were safe, as they were not actually owned by Pizza Time Theater, but rather Family Entertainment Centers Incorporated. Thankfully, the bankruptcy wouldn't last long as Pizza Time Theater was purchased by their competitor chain, Showbiz Pizza. Speaking of Showbiz, several people on Facebook kept telling me that there was a Showbiz Pizza in Bowling Green. However, there's no evidence to support that. But on the subject of restaurants, let's talk more about what was inside this current Chuck E. Cheese location. The inside of the restaurant was a dark color with orangish-brown booths as well as picnic tables and low lights hanging from the ceiling, as well as a salad bar just like every other Pizza Time theater at the time. As for the game room, they had several activities for children of any age, such as a giant cheese wall that you could crawl around in, as well as a slide that went through the wall. They also had these things called flying turtles, where you ride them around in a small section of the restaurant. You probably have seen these before as they continue to be used by gyms and schools. They also had a giant ball pit, and apparently from what people said on Facebook, it was massive. Alright everybody, strap in because I'm about to tell you every arcade game and kitty ride that they had. Thanks to a newspaper ad, I was able to find out what games and rides this location had. For arcade games, they had Popeye, Crossbow, Joust, Dig Dug, Cubert, Turbo, Disc of Tron, Crystal Castle, Zaxxon, Frogger, Centipede, Galaga, Track and Field, Phoenix, Burger Time, Grand Champion, Moppet Video, and of course, Ski Ball. As for kitty rides, they had a helicopter, a hydrocopter, a Red Baron race car, a balloon ride, a motorbike, and of course, the world famous Chuck E. Cheese Carousel. I'm pretty sure these were standard rides and games for every Pizza Time Theater back then. And just like every other Pizza Time Theater around the time, they had an animatronic stage show referred to as the Balcony Stage, since the animatronics were on a balcony attached to the wall. There was also a large maze at the bottom of the stage where kids and adults could crawl under the animatronics. I think that they should totally bring this back. Speaking of the animatronics, they were the real stars of the restaurant, as they performed daily every 15 minutes. These animatronics are called Cyberamics, and were the most common throughout restaurants at the time. They were called the Pizza Time Platers, and it includes Mr. Munch, Jasper T. Jowls, Chuck E. Cheese, Helen Henny, and Pasquale the Chef. They also had the Warbolettes too, when the restaurant first opened, they had four show tapes for the balcony stage, those being Country and Western, 50s Hits, Top 40s, and Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, they also had special Christmas outfits for the animatronics. It's unlikely that this location had any guest characters besides Helen, since after Showbiz took over, they got rid of most of them. But there was one guest character that made it into the restaurant, and his name was The King. He was a large, nine-foot-tall lion animatronic that was made to resemble Elvis Presley, and he also performed his songs. He performed in an area of the restaurant called The Lounge, also known as The Cabaret. Here's something interesting. This picture of the king I'm showing you right now is the only known public photo of Bowling Green's Pizza Time Theater, as there are no other public photos available. There's not even a photo of the exterior of the restaurant, which I was really hoping to find. The Bowling Green location obviously had a Chuck E. Cheese mascot costume, as did every other location, but they also had some other characters as well, like Munch, Jasper, and Pasquale. And here's a few more fun facts. The Chuck E. Cheese actually sold more beer than some of the other shops and restaurants around the mall area. Kinda odd since, you know, it's a kid's restaurant. On the subject of kids, if any kid came to Chuck E. Cheese with their report card and they had straight A's, you could play all the games for free. Chuck E. Cheese has also sponsored a few local baseball teams and gave the players unlimited tokens and discounts. Finally, for some of the older guests, Chuck E. Cheese had something called Teen Nights, where teens could party on Friday nights and weekends. It featured everything from lip-sync battles to neon lights everywhere. 
People even say that Chuck E. Cheese's was way more of a teenage hangout than a place for kids. But this would all come with its problems, and something that would occur because of this. Being a kid, fancy parties, scratchy clothes, and you have to smile no matter what. Ooh, give Andy a big kiss. See what I mean? Buy a chunky cheese, you can act like a kid. You can have more fun than you ever did. Sometime around late April or early May of 1986, the fun came to a stop and smiles turned to frowns as Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater of Bowling Green, Kentucky closed unexpectedly after only two years in operations. This came as a complete shock to people living in the surrounding areas, as there were no hints to a closure, and even today we still don't really know why it closed. But I have two possible reasons for its closure. Number one. The year was 1986, and in 1986, Chuck E. Cheese's and Showbiz Pizza merged into one company, after being separate, and they probably were closing a couple locations that weren't needed or profitable enough. Number two, this is the most plausible reason, at least according to people on Facebook. It closed because there was a lot of shady activities that went on around the area, such as drug deals and gang violence. Remember, they had teen nights and sold a lot of beer. Whatever the reason was, it was clear that Chuck E. Cheese had left the building, as everything from the games to the animatronics were auctioned off to the public. Does anybody watching this remember going to this auction? And more importantly, do you have anything from the auction? Please leave it in the comments below and I'd love to know. So as the last things were auctioned off, the building sat abandoned for many years, and was put up for sale many times with many places filling the former space. Today, the old Hickory building still stands, and the stores that took over the former Chuck E. Cheese space are now a hair studio, a nutritional place, and an estate space. If anyone's interested in visiting, it's located at 2530 Scottsville Road, Bowling Green, Kentucky, 42104. And while you're there, make a video. As the years went by, people in and around the Bowling Green area realized that Chuck E. Cheese would never come back. But what they didn't know was in 18 years, he would return. Got it? Got what? One. One what? One token. Got it. So what you get? Any game? Tickets to win! Lots of new prizes! Are you getting this? Chuck E. Cheese's! You got one, you got more fun! On February 10th, 2004, it was announced that Chuck E. Cheese would be making his grand return to Bowling Green, in the form of a brand new store as part of an expansion to the Greenwood Mall. The space that Chuck E. Cheese would be taking over was originally home to a Morrison's Cafe, but that and a few other stores were torn out in favor of Chuck, as well as an Old Navy and Yankee Candle. This news brought so much joy to Bowling Green residents as it had been so long. Thankfully, they wouldn't have to wait any longer, as in April 2004, exactly 20 years after the original Pizza Time Theater opened, the new and improved Chuck E. Cheese's of Bowling Green, Kentucky opened to the public. The restaurant itself is what's called a Phase 3 store, which is the standard store design for Chuck E. Cheese's inside of a mall. It had several posters parodying movies, TV, and music albums, as well as magazine covers and sports equipment on the wall, with some vintage 90s signs as well. They also have these character posters. They're actually the only store in Kentucky to still feature them. They also have these iconic rainbow Andy Warhol Chuck E. Cheese portraits. Louisville has them too, and so do the other non-2.0 stores. They also had wall planters, but those were removed in 2010. Phase 3 also introduced the giant crayons toddler zone, as well as the sky tubes, 
However, Bowling Green doesn't have either of these. They could have been there a long time ago, but since it's a smaller mall store, they probably didn't. It does feature the iconic and recognizable red and turquoise booths with the hanging lights, though. Here's a fun fact. Bowling Green's Chuck E. Cheese is actually the last location in Kentucky to be a Phase 3 store. The other stores in Kentucky are either a Phase 4 or 2.0. The outside is nothing too special, it just has large windows and those iconic red doors, but they also have a red and yellow awning with the Phase 3 90's Cool Chuck logo, the last one in Kentucky as well. And because this location is in a mall, there's some detail on the inside as well. They have another Cool Chuck logo inside, as well as a few Phase 3 signs. Sadly, you can't enter from inside the mall, you have to go outside for that. Which I think is pretty stupid, but I guess you can only have one kid check stand. As for the animatronic stage, it's a pretty interesting one. This stage is called the Studio C Kappa, and was the standard stage placed in smaller Chuck E. Cheese restaurants like Bowling Green. It was actually the 18th Kappa installed at the time. The stage was first designed back in July 2003, and features a small blue screen surrounded by zebra stripes, three TVs, some sort of swirly design at the back of the stage, and a 16-movement Chuck E. Cheese bot created by the Garner Holt Company. It doesn't feature any curtains due to those being discontinued at the time. When the stage was first introduced, Chuck E. was given his normal Cool Chuck outfit, which includes a red baseball cap, a blue shirt with a yellow C, and khaki shorts. He wore this outfit until around 2012 or 2013, when he was given the Avenger outfit, but he still kept the khakis on until around 2014 or 2015. As of today, Chucky has the Rockstar jeans, and he swaps between his Avenger and Rockstar shirt. At the time of this recording, he's wearing the Avenger shirt. And now here's some more information on this location. They don't have too much to offer in terms of games and rides. They mostly just have classic games like skee-ball, and a few rides like the famous red Chucky car that takes your picture, and the spinning hot chocolate ride with those creepy looking marshmallow dudes. At least the cup has Avenger Chucky on it. The classic menu with Avenger Chuck on it was recently replaced in 2019, and made into a digital menu. And as to my knowledge, they only have the Chuck E. Cheese mascot, none of the other characters, but sometimes he walks through the mall and can be seen there during special events. But not everything has been good, as Bowling Green's location also got into a bit of controversy in August 2015, when they denied a police officer service because of her firearm. They tried to defend themselves saying that it was a big misunderstanding and that the officer wasn't in uniform, but she actually was. This wasn't national news, but it spread throughout a lot of news sources, and people called for a boycott of the restaurant and chain. Obviously, things are fine now. And that brings us to today. As of August 2021, the Chuck E. Cheeses in Bowling Green, Kentucky is alive and well, and currently sits at a 4.2 out of 5 on Google, and a 5 out of 5 on Facebook. It's often regarded as one of the best Phase 3 Chuck E. Cheese stores, and I hope to visit it one day. If you want to visit it, then it's located at 2625 Scottsville Road, Bowling Green, Kentucky, 42104, located on the first floor of the Greenwood Mall, located right next to J.C. Penney's. However, you might want to visit it soon because of some news I heard about recently, and it's not good news. It's time for the Chuck E. Cheese Summer of Fun. You can play your favorite games, win e-tickets and prizes, catch the new show, and have fun as a family. There's one place for ultimate summer fun, only at Chuck E. Cheese. So sometime in early 2020, news broke that Bowling Green's Chuck E. Cheese would be one of the locations to receive the cancer known as Chuck E. Cheese 2.0. There was no date as to when it would receive it, but this got many CEC Kentucky fans upset, and sad that a great location like Bowling Green would be remodeled. 
But then something happened in 2020 that would change everything. The COVID-19 pandemic. This deadly pandemic killed hundreds each day and forced businesses around the world to temporarily close or even shut down permanently. And Chuck E. Cheese was one of the companies affected badly as they ended up filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy for the second time in their history. But this time, there was no showbiz to save them. So because of COVID-19 shutting down operations for Chuck E. Cheese, they were forced to postpone all remodel plans until things could get back to normal. And that includes Bowling Green. Now while this is bad news for Chuck E. Cheese's, this is great news for their fans as they had more time to spend with their animatronics. At least after quarantine, that is. Thankfully, Chuck E. Cheese was able to get out of bankruptcy around December 2020. But immediately after, they started up their remodel plans and are now going after fan favorite locations. I plan to talk more about this in my 2.0 rant I'll do next year. So what does this all have to do with Bowling Green? Well, since they were originally supposed to receive 2.0 in 2020, they could end up remodeling at any point now. There are rumors that Bowling Green will get 2.0 in 2022, but we'll have to wait and see. I will mention that the location already has the 2.0 game package, meaning they don't have as many games as before, and removed a lot of classic games. This is really all they can do because since they are inside a mall, and are smaller than a normal Chuck E. Cheese's, they can't really do much, and I don't think they have room for that stupid crappy dance floor. So what does this mean for the Chucky bot? Is it safe? Is he okay? Will he get to see another day? Well, no. According to a YouTuber by the name of the Geeky underscore Nerd, he talked to the owners and they mentioned that the current Bowling Green location will relocate within two years. Now this is just a rumor, but I believe it is possible that a relocation could occur. Whether it's in a strip mall like Louisville or Lexington, or a standalone store like Florence and Paducah. Just be prepared for a relocation announcement, and you might want to hug the Chucky bot next time you go there, because it seems that his and the current location's days are numbered. And there you have it, the history of Chuck E. Cheese's in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Before I end this video, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Chatty Chucky for giving me special permission to use their videos as well as helping me out and giving me some information about the current location. Be sure to subscribe to them and check out their YouTube page, as well as their Instagram page. Tell them Nathan sent you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the History Of series. Bye bye Chucky, say bye. Chucky. Have a Chucky day. Hey, hey, hey.